very warm good afternoon to everyone. Hello, Ms. Lina. Uh, hello, Mr. Gobichand, and hello, Mr. Uh, Jaffa. It is actually an honor for me uh, to have a fireside conversation with uh, prestigious individuals like yourself. Actually, this fireside conversation has a history in itself. I had mentioned in an earlier session. Um, but since we have a very limited time, I'll get directly to the questions. Uh, Ms. Lina, uh, if I may ask, according to the Vision 2030 of KSA, uh, His Highness Mohammed bin Salman, the Crown Prince of Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, and I quote, he mentioned, uh, declared that the participation in sport has to increase from 13% to 40% in the region. So why do you think such a declaration was made? And why is it so important to invest in sport? Assalamu alaikum, everybody. Uh, regarding Vision 2030, it was definitely the turning point for sports in Saudi Arabia. It had many objectives, out of which increasing participation from 13 to 40 percent. It wasn't just about the sports. The country looked at it from a perspective of, in, uh, in terms of spending over 19 billion Saudi rials on uh, diseases related to the lack of movement. So because people weren't moving, they were spending a lot of money and the, under the Ministry of Health and a lot of also social uh, problems, uh, boredom, uh, many other, uh, you know, uh, issues so on a social perspective. So it was really um, a turning point for the sports sector, especially for women, because the vision didn't differentiate between boys and girls, men and women. It was for everybody. It was really about sports for everyone, young, uh, middle-aged, the elders, uh, persons with uh, disability. Um, in addition to that, it was about empowering women because also as an objective under the vision was to increase women in the workforce. So technically the sports sector is, yes, a big part of it is, is the activity part and um, the participation, but also you're looking at it from job opportunities, um, men and women working in different sectors related to sports, whether it's sports marketing, sports psychology, um, or the technical parts of sports. Um, I think that, uh, you know, it was one of the most successful transformations in the world because our targets, for example, women in the workforce, was to reach 30% by 2030. And we've already reached that target and surpassed that, um, you know, uh, number. So that's, well, you know, and I think more to come, hopefully, even when it comes to the uh, figures of sports. Wow. Mashallah, that's great. Uh, Mr. Gobich, and the next question would be to you. Now, on a very general level, maybe on a global context, considering that you were in the sport industry for a very long time, what do you think is the future of sport especially considering the investment channels coming into the sport and the scope of the sports sector in general. Good afternoon, everyone. I think um, for me, the investment in sport is something which is very critical for the very fact um, what Ms. Lena said about lack of movement causing a lot of issues. And if you look at our world today, we have grown alphabetically and numerically in some sense, but we've gone down physically in the last 30 years. And the digital revolution and technology has only made things worse on the physical side. So we have to invest to ensure that people are healthier physically and mentally. And I think it's time for us that investments are needed, are necessary, to make this transformation and this lack or this lag in the literacy, if we were to call alphabetical and numerical literacy in some sense as a positive sign, we have to take what has happened in the last 30 years on the physical side as negative and start to invest on it to ensure that the future generations are healthy and we can take things forward. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, Mr. Jaffa, uh, if, uh, you have been in the Arab Federation of the Sport Council. Now you are the uh, head of BWF 
uh, in the uh, Dubai chapter. So how strong is the presence of uh, badminton in the Arab region? And uh, what do you think is the future goals of BWF in the Arab region? Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, you know, investing in sport is really important. And we cannot uh, only imagine that government should invest in the sport only. I think it is the community and everybody and the private sector also responsibility to provide more facilities to promote the sport. Like any other product, we can see the video games and we can see all the products. There's a huge companies are promoting it, but we don't see yet that a lot of people, you know, a lot of businessmen looking at sports and investing and building stadiums and building arenas where that arenas and sport can compete with the video games and with, with compete with shopping malls and cinemas and other things that we don't actually move to do it. And badminton in the region have grown so much in the past eight years. Uh, we can see a lot of academies now, coaches, competitions, not only in the UAE, but also we see a lot in Saudi Arabia and Bahrain, Qatar, Kuwait, and the whole GCC. And I think it's, it's really a good trend to see companies, academies, are putting effort to support the government efforts, to support Badminton World Federation and Continental Federation and National Federation, because I don't think so that any national federation have the capability to fulfill the demand for the sport. There's large numbers who plays badminton. We have in the UAE, we have more than 10 to 15,000 that players who plays on a regular basis. Imagine how much facilities we have to build and provide for them, for them to able to continue playing badminton. So it's really important to have private sectors joining hands with the government sector to provide these opportunities, playing opportunities for everyone. And I liked it. The question was about participation and was not about performance. Because in many cases, people look at sport as only performance, about the top level players and their achievement. But in many times, we forget about the community and the health of the community. So a lot of government now looking at participation models, about opportunities, about building facilities, because this is the only way we can get the community moves. Thank you. Um, as you mentioned, there's a coexistence of uh, the businesses and sports have to go hand in hand for the betterment of the overall uh, segment of the market. So uh, what I would uh, again ask Ms. Lina is one thing, uh, one interesting thing I noticed in the bio of Jeddah United is, I mean, since I'm also a very big fan of basketball, um, you have two academies. One is dedicated to football and one academy is dedicated to basketball. But what strikes me is why basketball in the Middle East region? Because uh, obviously football is the most popular game in the Middle East region. So is it because you see a great future in the game? So I was a um, graduate of a Saudi private school. And um, in private Saudi schools, we had basketball as uh, the only most popular game. We had volleyball as well. Uh, but for basketball, in my opinion also, maybe I'm biased, but it's easy to put a hoop and just play anywhere. You can play by yourself. You know, you just shoot baskets. And um, so it's obviously part of it is I'm passionate about basketball, but also in terms of um, availability, that was the number one available sports for girls in private schools and also in some of the um, welfare societies for girls. Um, so it was just uh, very popular. Obviously, for boys, it's football. But I'm excited about badminton, honestly, uh, to also help promote and um, have it... Uh, more, further more popular in Saudi Arabia. We're excited about the badminton. That would be something that uh, would be interesting to see in the next coming, inshallah, according to your vision. And I'm honored to be sitting with a legend who I'm really enjoying the book of um, 
the, the chop, uh, there's a, they call you by something chop, sir, in the book. And um, I really believe that sports is not just about the scores or the wins, but it's really an attitude. And it's about this, the values that carries throughout the, the learning experience. And I've really sensed that. And that's why it's not just about, you know, uh, the technical part, but it's a holistic approach. And I think this is how we should look at uh, sports. Um, talking about the legend himself, uh, it was in the, uh, I read your bio, and then I, I have come across this, this incident where in the childhood you were more interested to play cricket. And uh, it was your brother who advised uh, you to try badminton. And uh, so, actually, this was seen in the early stages of the sports sector in India that, you know, most of the people were going more focused on the cricket environment. Do you think it is still relevant or do you think the whole uh, scenario in the India is shifting towards other sports segments also? Well, I think um, although I've played sport for so long, it, it is only, I do believe that there's a lot of destiny and luck in, in the choice because I went to join for cricket and um, the cricket stadium was full and then my parents went me to join for tennis and when they walked out tennis was there were too many cars parked outside so they decided it's against playing tennis because it seemed like a rich man's sport and I actually went to play badminton because it was empty <laughs> so it was a lot of destiny and a luck which was uh, in my career but as a sport, badminton in the last, say, 10 or 15 years has grown tremendously. Um, I wouldn't say that um, uh, cricket is not, um, is getting any less popular, but cr cricket is hugely popular. But if there is any sport which is picked up in the last few years and which is close to being at the top, it's badminton for sure. And it's actually grown and uh, the advantage is that it's indoors, it's women can play, um, people of any age group can play. So it actually is a sport which, which is not intimidating and a lot of people find it very friendly to play. So that's the advantage which badminton has. It feels a, gives a very secure feeling about it. And uh, we also have the performances to inspire kids to play the sport. So we kind of, uh, there where the sport has actually grown in the last few years. Thank you. Um, since the time is very limited, uh, I feel like, you know, the session should have been an hour long because there was more of uh, interesting questions that we could have exchanged and more information to come on. I think we'll conclude with one last question. Um, I mean, the question is directed to all three of you. So what would be an advice to the future investors who's aspiring to, you know, to be an investor in the sports sector? What, what challenges would they face or what would be the benefits that uh, come out of such an investment? Yeah. Um, I personally believe it's a win-win situation. Uh, when you invest in sports, you're investing from uh, all the different dynamics, from, from building generations, healthier, positive generations, as well as a return of investment. So you're really looking at it from a financial as well as a social uh, uh, benefit. Um, I think that, uh, it, you know, the sports sector is a multi-billion dollar industry and uh, the potential is uh, very high in, for Saudi Arabia. Uh, you know, at the turning point, as you mentioned, was Vision uh, 2030. Um, and you see a lot of the sports uh, events on an international level. Like, for example, I attended the Formula One. Formula One was an amazing uh, opportunity for you know sponsors to for their brands to be out there and um, you know it's just hopefully just the beginning but icons I think in the world like I remember meeting Muhammad Ali Klai and how powerful he was for the sports of boxing of course as boxing is a sport but also um, in cool. terms of him as an icon um, so I think this is hopefully just the beginning for us in Saudi Arabia I think it'll be great to invest in sport. Um, as Zafar has mentioned, I think uh, it's not only governments. Governments need to invest because if you don't invest in sport, then you have to invest in hospitals and health. So you don't have an option there. Yeah. So I think it's important that they invest. But also from, 
from um, from the industry i think it's a huge growing industry it's a very positive connect to have uh, for industry because it it showcases champions winners fighters and that's great great positivity for the companies to be investing in and i do believe that win or you lose you participate in sport and you are a champion sooner or later people will recognize that that it's not about professionals or winning it's about participation and giving your 100% and the life lessons which you learn out of sport so i do believe that the future is for sport and it is very very critical and important not only from an ethical perspective but from a bank balance perspective as well to invest in sport yeah uh, post covid uh, we can see or we cannot say maybe uh, it, it, even during covid here we had a trend in the uae where a lot of people started to open uh, badminton facilities in the, in uae but also one you know remarkable story about battle tennis battle tennis have grown so much in the region in the just past two years we have hundreds of facilities now in the gcc compared to maybe tenth of facilities only in the beginning of 2020 that shows that we have a huge untapped market there is a lot of people who wants to play sports and it's not about football only i mean i have we have to say this football is the the biggest sport in our region and everybody loves football but we have to provide options and it is investors uh, opportunity they can invest in several sports i come from badminton i can see here in the uae there is a lot of academies came up we have more than 40 academies now in the uae compared to 3 in 2014 this shows that there is a huge potential and there is more and more facilities coming up as well the market is very young and what we can tell the investors investing in sports is just not about money yes there is return on investment as you said but also we are investing in our future uh, generation we are investing in, in their health and their mental health we are getting them outside home and and video games and mobiles and tabs and i think in today worlds is sport is for me is the top priority for anybody to invest because it's the only way we can fight against the video games and tabs and tablets and the virtual world so investors they can assure that there is return of investment but also they will do something to help the community to move forward and to provide more opportunities for lifelong participation it's not only about kids adults but it's about lifelong participation ladies and gentlemen it's an absolute pleasure to have all the three legends here who's trying to uplift the sports sector regionally and as well as globally again it's a pleasure to have all you here and uh, spend wonderful time with you now to end the session i would like to invite mr taufi the md of uh, gulf badminton academy to hand over a signed agreement Uh, of GBA and Jeddah United to Lena Almani